So we're going to look at the uh, solubility product of ionic compounds. And uh, this works for any ionic compound that has a solubility limit. We are looking at uh, even the compounds that we describe as being insoluble generally, but even though they're insoluble, they still dissolve to a small degree, and we can look at that. So the solubility of an ionic compound in water is, of course, a reversible process. We're at equilibrium when we have some solid that cannot dissolve. So that's how we know that we're at our solubility limit. We have some solids that can dissolve. So we write our equilibrium expression. And um, the solid will break into the cations. There are, of course, a variety of um, ion combinations that can be seen when we dissolve some of the other some of these ion compounds, but we can deal with it just as being a single reaction to the, our product here. So we're going to have our cation and anion for each solid. And then when we write our equilibrium expression, it's going to be product of reactants. The reactant being a solid does not show up in our equilibrium expression. So that's why we call it a product here. So it's going to be the product of the cation times the anion. And as with all of our equilibrium expressions, we raise up the concentrations to the exponent. So for silver chloride, we form one silver ion, one chloride ion. So our KSP is silver ion times chloride ion. For ferrous hydroxide, we form one iron ion and two hydroxide ions. So the KSP is the iron raised to the first power and hydroxide raised to the second power. For potassium phosphate, we're going to form three calcium ions and two phosphate ions. So our solubility product KSP equals the calcium cubed and the phosphate squared. Well, our normal way of describing solubility is in terms of grams per 100 ml. And this is not useful in our solubility product, so we're going to practice converting normal solubility into molar solubility. So if we're having a 3.89 times per 100 ml, it's easy to assume that we only have 100 ml of solution. So that quantity, 100 ml times the concentration, 3.89 times per 100 ml, will give us 3.89 grams of that barium hydroxide octa-octate. Octahydrate, octahydrate. So that's the compound. So in water, that barium hydroxide as a solid form likes to hold eight water molecules in there. So that's what we have to use for molar mass, the whole compound barium hydroxide with the eight waters attached. So we take a 3.89 grams divided by the molar mass, we get moles of barium hydroxide. Well, we need uh, just volume now. We assumed 100 ml, so that's 0.1 liter. So we take our moles, divide it by 0.1 liters, and we have 0.123 molarity of barium hydroxide. So that's the molar solubility of barium hydroxide. We also want to know the concentration of each of the ions, because that's what we're going to do need in our KSV product. So we take the molar solubility of the compound and then we multiply it for the ratio of how many ions are in the compound so it'll be the ratio of one barium per one barium hydroxide so we end up with 0.123 molarity of barium ion our 0.123 molarity of barium hydroxide times the ratio of two hydroxide in one barium hydroxide we end up with 0.246 molarity of hydroxide so this Try a couple more calculations here. So being able to convert between the solubility product and concentration. So concentration to KSP is probably the easier direction to go. 
So we're given that the solubility, the molar solubility of bismuth iodide is uh, 1.32 times 10 to the minus 5. What is the KSP? So we write out the solubility equation showing the formation of the cation and anion. And then we want to calculate the concentration of each of the ions. So we do our molar solubility times the ratio of ions, so one bismuth and the bismuth iodide, and we end up with 1.32 times 10 minus 5 molarity of bismuth. For iodine, we do uh, the molar solubility times the ratio of three iodide to one bismuth iodide, we end up with 3.96 times 10 minus 5 uh, molarity for the iodide. So we write our KXB uh, expression. It's going to be a bismuth times iodide cubed. We put in the concentrations, run it through a calculator, and we end up with a 9.20 times 10 to minus 19. And this is typical for a lot of solubility products is that we can have some very small exponents on these solubility products. So let's go the other direction. Let's take our KSP and turn it to molar solubility. <coughs> So we're given that silver phosphate has a KSP of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 18. And we want to know what this molar solubility is. So we write out the solubility expression, the silver phosphate turning into three silver ions and one phosphate ion. And now we want to rewrite this in terms of a solubility term, S, where S is one to one with the concentration, the molar solubility of the silver phosphate. So in the expression, we have a one-to-one -one ratio between the uh, silver phosphate and phosphate. So we can just replace that with a S, solubility. And then silver has a factor of three, coefficient of three in front. So we get three S there. We write our KSP in terms of the solubility. So we have our, um, hmm, didn't write out all the way. Let me add it on the original end. So our KSP will be silver cubed times our phosphate. So silver phosphate, our silver silver has a value of 3s, so we put in our 3s there and then we cube it. Uh, the phosphate has a value of s, so we put that in. And we can reduce this expression down, we get 27s to the fourth power. So we put in our Value for our KSP, 1.8 times 10 to the minus 18. Then we solve for S. So I would divide by the 27 and then do the fourth root of it. So there you know, are two ways that we can write this out. We can do a root to the fourth power or a power to the one fourth. Um, so we divide this down, do the fourth root of it, and we end up with solubility of 1.6 times 10 minus 5 molar solubility for our silver phosphate. 